Hello, it's Adam with Tech Dive. Today we are reviewing the FDR AX100 by Sony. And I like this camera, and I wanted to film the review for this camera with this camera, and I finally figured out how. That's the camera. You're looking in a mirror, my friend. Everything you know is a lie. So the FDR AX100 is the camera that I've been hoping for when I bought it a couple of years back. And this camera is just really a great little workhorse prosumer camera. Now I do professional work with this camera and I wanted a camera that had a big lens and that was 4K and that had some good crisp picture and a decent sensor size. And it's got a one inch sensor, the lens is nice and crisp and it's got a good uh, Kodak to it as well. So th these kinds of things were really helpful in getting a good roundabouts camera. I wanted it to be able to do a wide variety of things and I wanted to be able to have some cinematographer type controls on the camera but I didn't have the money for the camera I actually wanted. I know no one else ever feels that way. So the FDR AX100 just hit that sweet spot in the price point. Currently it's selling for $1200 which is a great deal. I paid $1,600 for it a couple years ago, and I think when it first launched, it was even more money. But now that it's a cheaper price, it's even it's even kind of a better deal. If it was $1,000, that would be amazing. Now, there's lots of things that say they do 4K, but this camera has the lens and the sensor that really, truly support it. It does 4K 60 megabits per second. It does offer a 100 megabits per second, but take that with a grain of salt. I've had difficulty getting the 100 megabits per second to work even with the recommended Sony brand SD card for it, it still says that the SD card isn't fast enough for the 100 megabits per second footage, even though it's a class 10 SD card. But the 4K 60 footage looks pretty great and crisp. And you can also do a higher megabits per second 1080p footage and you can adjust all that stuff in the settings. And you can even change between the XAVC-S codec, which is what it films with, which is a Sony proprietary codec, to an AVC codec. Now the XAVC codec is a great looking codec. That is what I choose to film with. The AVC codec is still useful because you can use it to get higher frame rates. It's even got a great little slow-mo section uh, where you can do small captures of slow-mo footage. Now, do not buy this camera for its slow-mo capabilities. Buy this camera because it can do a little bit of everything. If you're looking for a Swiss Army knife of a prosumer camera, this is your man. So the lens on it is a Zeiss lens. It's a good quality lens. It's a nice big two inch size lens. And I'm just so sick of everybody holding up their little tiny lenses thinking a lot of light's gonna get through that. It shoots at a 2.8 f-stop at a wide angle and it shoots at a 4 f-stop at a tight telephoto angle at the tightest tightest of the telephoto angle. However, it does have an 18 times magnification in its telephoto. Now, that is some great, great crisp telephoto that you really don't see that loss of the stop of light because you're, you're getting so much zoom before you have to move to that four stop. It shoots all right at low light. I've seen much, much worse, uh, but it's not technically like a great low light camera because it's not full frame. If you're going specifically for a low light camera, you need to look for a full frame sensor. One thing I like about this camera is it's got great color. It's got great dynamics and light. It just has a really good kind of solid Sony-ness about it, right? Sony comes in with these cameras that just kind of do everything pretty darn good. And this is one of those cameras. It does everything pretty darn good. I've seen a little bit better colors coming from a Canon camera, but there's nothing, the color shot is true enough that you really you really do get the richness of colors. If You, you can dial it up in your editor if you need to. But the colors, this, this is pretty strong color set for this camera. So the rolling shutter is a little bit apparent when you're in a telephoto mode and I've ran into that problem a few times so sometimes I you got to be careful it's a better tripod camera than a handheld run and gun it does work as a handheld run and gun like I said it's a Swiss Army knife but as a tripod camera this is where its greatest strength lie because you deal with the rolling shutter less so that's probably the weakest point of the entire camera as I have noticeably ran into the rolling shutter problem but not something that has kept me from using it ever. It's a small point, but it's the biggest gripe I have about it. 
using just a sensor stabilization, I've been able to, to really get some decent handheld shots using proper handheld shooting techniques. Uh, it's not got a gimbal or anything inside of it, so don't expect anything too crazy. That's probably the one thing that the AX53, the newer, cheaper 4K camera, does better, even though it does a lot of other things worse. Uh, one thing it could do better is it does have an actual physical gimbal inside of the AX53. This camera does not have any kind of physical gimbal. But, like I said, if you're tripod shooting, no issue. This lens gets a nice, crisp focus. And it even has a focus magnifier that you can pop in and do that focus with. If you're hand-holding, the buttons on the camera are clunky. But if you're tripod uses, then you've got great access to everything. And there's three buttons on the side in particular that are just choice. This, these three buttons, the, the sensor size, the lens size, and these three buttons are what makes this possible for professional use. There's lots of crap 4K cameras out there, but making it something that lets you use it like a professional is the ability to change the gain, the aperture, and the shutter speed, all from three little buttons on the side, and there's a dial. You just select the one you want to choose, you roll the dial. Select the one you want to choose, you roll the dial. Now, these buttons you can get to while hand-holding, but the buttons are super responsive and helpful. You can toggle them to auto, toggle them away from auto. That may help in a situation where if you're following somebody and you're running through a wide variety of lighting setups, you can kind of pick the one you don't mind sacrificing and kind of click that on the auto and then click that back off and roll it where you want it to go if you need to do any minor manual adjustments. Shooting full manual is super easy. Someone's told me, I've heard several people tell me, I love this camera. And I'm like, does it have manual settings? And they're like, yeah, you can do everything manual settings. But you get into a menu and you're like, deep, 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 deep. But when you get used to, if you've used professional level cameras, you're used to all these buttons on the side. That is extremely important. So that's something that I really think is super, super notable about this camera is that even though it still is a consumer, that's why I call it prosumer, it's still a consumer oriented camera. It's meant for the dad with a lot of money who wants a really, really, really nice family video, but it's also for the professional, someone like me who really doesn't want to sacrifice on getting a good quality video with the handheld controls, the buttons, the manual usage, the fast movingness of it all, I don't want to compromise on that. But I couldn't spend over two grand on a camera, but I could at the time spend 1600 on a camera. And that made all the difference. This is, this is probably the best prosumer camera I've used. Now, I've used better cameras, but they are squarely in the professional range. This is kind of the nice top end of the consumer. This is right here on the line. Anything lower is consumer. Anything higher is professional. This is that nice line. It can do 33 decibels of gain, and it can get to negative 3 in gain, and that is great if you're really trying to get that super low light shot. It gives you that option. However, it does, the gain does really affect the quality of video as you would expect. And even though it looks surprisingly good for that much gain when you're shooting with a high gain, it's not a substitute for the bigger sensor. Uh, so that's probably another weak point of the camera is the low light, it does rely on gain to compensate in the low light scenarios. When you're using a lighting setup like I'm currently using, I'm not having any issues, but it does still, it could do better in lower light because I would like to have to crank up my f-stop sometimes and get a wider depth of field that'd be nice and in fact I can do it when I got all my lights on full blast but in a lot of situations if you're running and gunning like if you're filming a documentary or if you're trying to kind of just throw the camera down and go and those kinds of situations uh, that you do need to use the gain a little bit uh, I can usually get away with three or six gain and that is that kinds of situations and that's good that and it doesn't really affect the quality too much I've used three gain plenty of times and never really regretted it six gain I have regretted it a few times anything more than that really you should try to add more light um, anything more than that should really only be like a live scenario situation. If you're a consumer looking for this, the automatic settings really, really rolls heavily towards using the gain to compensate for its issues. And I think that's a weak point of the auto settings. But one of the cool things is, is you can use 
all three of those things independently automatic settings. So you can have them all on automatic, two on automatic, or one on automatic in any combination, which is great because then you can choose which thing you want the camera to deal with and which thing you want to deal with yourself. The battery that comes with the camera is good. It's got a few hours in the battery life, but it does work great with aftermarket batteries that I'm currently using as an aftermarket battery. You can charge it with AC. You can charge it with USB. It's got tons of charging options, and you can charge it while you're filming. So battery life shouldn't be an issue for this camera since it's so cheap to get more. You can even charge it with a battery bank while you're filming. So that's awesome. That's great, great, great news. It does let you USB hook up directly to your computer. However, it's only USB 2.0. So if you're going to use the direct hookup to your computer, then you're only going to be transferring to your computer at USB 2.0 speeds. And when you've got a lot of 4K 60 megabit per second footage, that's a lot of footage you're going to have to delve through. So now, one of the cool things is it does use very high gig sizes. I've got a 64 gigabyte card in mine, and it is a class 10. Now, even with the class 10 SD card, it still doesn't let me do the 100 megabits per second that it says I can do in the camera. So I've always thought that was fishy. The 60 megabit per second 4K footage still comes out crisp and nice looking. So I've not really regretted this camera, even though it's got a lower megabits per second for the 4K, it's still got a really, really good look to the raw footage and it compresses well too. Another thing that makes this camera sit on the professional side of the fence more than the consumer side of the fence, something that makes it a great professional prosumer camera, is that it has the use of ND filters. Having three ND filters to choose from is fantastic. If you've ever filmed outside in the full sunlight, you will know that an ND filter is your best friend, and you have three best friends in this camera. The camera also does some great still photos. It's been a good DSLR replacement and a pinch because uh, you can still use your manual settings and your nice lens and you, you don't have the full sensor when you're using it in photo mode, but you still get some really good high quality photos. So if you're like a freelancer going around and you want some photos to work with as well as your video, you don't have to pull out a second camera. This thing's going to take some great photos. Now it says it has a 5.1 surround sound mic. And what that really is, is just a marketing ploy. The 5.1 surround sound is something you'll never use. You'll just be using the stereo sound. If you're expecting to buy this thing and get Dolby Atmos 5.1 surround sound with the mic in this camera, I'm sorry, that's just not going to happen. If you're buying this mic and you're thinking, oh gosh, that's pretty much an omnidirectional mic. If I'm just trying to get a run and gun shot of somebody talking to the microphone, that means it's going to pick up the background noise and the cameraman chewing his gum. Yes, that's exactly what that means. So you're going to want to use its 8th inch jack mic port to do extra mic. I'm currently external audio everything. I will show you. I've got the mic at 50% and I will show you. This is what the mic sounds like at 50% when I'm talking about a foot away from it. That can be decent. The mic is decent. It's going to get great home video mic footage. It's really great at picking up room noise. That's why I have it turned down so much when I do use it. Uh, but really, in general, you know, video professionals don't really expect to use the camera mic, and this is no different. One thing to note is it does use the Sony shoe. If you've got a collection of Sony shoe-sized things, that may be great for you. If you do not, that will be horrible. Uh, so one thing is you can get an adapter to use a regular shoe on it. I would grab that adapter and you're good to go. There's no longer an issue. Focus ring on it is great. It's nice and smooth. I love it. So filming with a mirror isn't, isn't, the most ideal thing but it's not too bad so uh it's got a great nice focus ring you can also use it as a zoom ring it uses servos to do it so don't expect to get like hollywood quality focus pools where you've done the math with the with the ruler and everything if you're doing that buy a nicer camera but uh, if you just want a nice, good focus pull, you know it's so much better than the rocker to use a zoom sometimes too with the ring. The ring is optional. It lets you do focus or it lets you do uh, zoom. And you can toggle between that pretty easily. And you can also toggle between manual and automatic focus really easily. The automatic focus in this camera is fairly good. Uh, it does some face tracking as well. But it's not, the automatic isn't 
like any automatic, it's probably one of the better on the spectrum of automatic focuses I've used, but automatic focus has some limitations. But it's done a great job for me in a run and gun scenarios. Just throw it on automatic focus and it it's gonna it's not gonna let you down. The Sony Kodak I feel like handles patterns a little better than AVC. Uh, but it's just about the same. It does colors a little richer than AVC too, I would argue. Uh, but but it's not too different than AVC. It, it is Sony proprietary. If you don't have an editing software, actually, let me tell you, I use Vegas, which is no longer Sony Vegas, but I use Vegas editing software. If you buy Vegas or Movie Studios, which is the cheaper little brother software towards it and it's also one of the cheapest ways to get to gpu accelerated editing if you buy any of those through our affiliates link that really helps us out a ton that software uses this it can render out to this camera's codec natively uh, it can use this camera's codec really well i love using that software with this camera so for editing that's always been a smooth thing for me as far as the rest of the interface goes, the buttons are nice. The rest of the interface is highly consumer oriented with the way it's labeled and you have to drill down pretty deep to get to some of the finer things. But those aren't usually things you're affecting while filming. So that's not ever been a problem for me. So I'll show you in here the menu. There's just a several different menus and options you can drill down. You get a lot of the standard options of zebras and the focus finder and all sorts of things that are just helpful. It's got a highly customizable interface where you can add and remove buttons. I've added and removed the buttons successfully and I am very happy with how the interface looks on uh, the camera now. However, it will have a ton when you first open it up. So I would definitely recommend going in there and messing with that. I have used this camera for broadcasting. It only really does 1080p and 720p broadcasting it doesn't do full 4k so that's something to consider if it will so if you're just looking for again a swiss army nice of a production camera something you can throw in a bag and run and gun and yeah you got a broadcast with it now hook up your mini hdmi to hdmi to a capture card and you're cooking with gas it works it does a great little capture and with the lens it's nice and crisp and and it, and it does a 1080p or 720p output that's good. Uh, don't expect it to do a 4K output. You're going to be paying a lot more money to get a camera that does that kind of output. So if you're looking for something that can do a broadcast output, this will do it. It will do a broadcast output. That's not the strength of this camera, but it certainly holds its own. You don't necessarily have to shoot in 4K. You can also shoot in 1080p. Some of the other buttons it has on the outsides, which a professional will find helpful, is you have the ability to toggle the display, and you have the ability to use the viewfinder if you pull it out. The viewfinder is great for showing you what the colors are really going to look like without the sun. It doesn't have a big sun shield. I've never found that a problem but some people do. You also have an eighth inch jack audio out so you can monitor your audio that you're capturing in the camera live or listen back to your footage later uh, at an easier volume. It does have a little speaker too, so if you're just trying to see if you got it and you're watching your footage, you can also kind of hear what you're saying. The speaker isn't super loud though, so don't expect to have a big viewing party with your friends unless you're HDMI hooking it up. The HDMI output will allow you to hook up a larger screen so you can do things like work with a jib and have the screen somewhere else or you can see the screen while you're filming and walking around a set. Uh, the LCD though on this camera is a pretty sharp and crisp LCD. It has been probably one of the more helpful LCDs I've used and it's definitely a modern LCD. It is touch screen which is one of the more consumer things about this camera. You will have to use the touchscreen to get through the menu system. And that's annoying because I hate getting smudges on the screen that I need to use in a minute. And I'm not always using the little viewfinder like I should. So I would like to say that is something frustrating about it. But also, I can flip it around. I can flip the screen completely around and there's so many cameras that you cannot do that with and that's frustrating if you're filming yourself all the time like I do for YouTube videos so having the ability to flip the camera around oh and sometimes you can just flip it around and show the talent like hey you look good and then they're like ah good it's not uh, 
it's going to be okay. And they get a lot calmer, and then they start reading their lines. That's just a great thing to be able to do. And you can do that with this camera. It hooks up to every conventional tripod. It comes with a remote, and this remote's super handy. You can do, you can do menu options with the remote, and you can also um, pl do playback options with the remote, so that is handy. And you can start and stop the recordings with the remote if you've got your camera in an inconvenient location while filming. Or if you're filming yourself and you just don't want to stand up and press play, this remote has been great. And it's actually not a battery suck. I've never changed a battery on this in a couple years. I don't use this remote all the freaking time, but I've used it a lot. This camera's pretty durable too. It's been through a couple of drops. Sorry, Steven, if you didn't know that. It's been through a couple of drops and it still is working great. It's uh, it's traveled really well. It's got a nice, compact, solid design to it. It's gotten a little rain on it and it's not had any issues. So again, another reason why I think it's a good Swiss Army, kind of good run and gun prosumer production camera is because it, it has the ability to kind of get out in the elements a little bit and still come back great. I do, I keep the sun shield on it the, to keep the lens flares off. I also think that makes the camera look a lot cooler. So uh, that's one of the reasons I keep it on. So should you buy this camera, I highly recommend it. I've had a great time with it, and I think it's very robust for everything it can do, especially now that the price is starting to fall on it. It's not it's not losing its modernness. It's just other cameras are coming out that are similar to this camera, and Sony's coming out with some new cameras like it, but this camera still, it's at a great price point, and it's still got a lot of great power, and it's got a great picture to it. And these things, it just that's really what I was looking for when it came down to it. I want to be able to use the camera easily, and it still have a pretty picture. And I think this camera doesn't sacrifice on the pretty picture, with, a, but it gives you the best price to performance on that ratio. If you're a person who's working with video professionally, but you don't have a ton of money to shell out towards it, this, I think, is a great option for you. It's got it's a wide variety. It's got a great lens that handles a wide variety of scenarios. It's something that's going to work well with your lights. It's going to work all right in low lighting situations. It's compromised in the places where it's acceptable to compromise on, but it's not compromised in places where, as a professional, you do not want to compromise. It's really what I feel the best bang for the buck at this price point that I could find and it's something that I have never regretted using. It's always pleasantly surprised me and what this camera has been able to pull off and how good some of this footage can really look. So thank you so much for watching this review. This has been Adam with Tech Dive. We do some camera reviews and computer reviews and tech reviews. If you're looking for uh, someone who does computer building and videography, I am your guy. I do both. And Steven does as well. And so we will be covering both of these topics. If you're looking more specifically for editing tutorials and video production tutorials, we do those on Tech Dive AV Club. And you can click the link here at the end of the video or in the description to get to that channel. Again, everything you buy through our affiliates link helps us out a ton. Thank you so much for watching. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. I'll see you next time.